Hi, this is Eric again. Just uh, thought I'd go ahead and give you a little uh, information on the settings tab. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into settings. And we're going to start over there on the left hand side where it says airplane mode. We're only going to talk about the communications uh, settings right for right now. I'm going to start with airplane mode. What is airplane mode? Well, just like it sounds, if you have to get into an airplane, you know, go go on an airplane ride somewhere, you're going to go to Paris for the weekend. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Anyhow, what that does is uh, to meet the rules of the airline, they want to shut off all the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, and GPS. So that's pretty much what that switch does. Another thing that I found that the switch does really well, if you're having issues with your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or cellular, you can turn, or GPS, you can turn this airplane mode on and off, and that basically toggles all of that communications, and sometimes it just frees up some of the problems that you may be experiencing. It's kind of works really nice. Like sometimes if your Wi-Fi is slow, your, your cellular is slow, just flip it on and off and yeah, that'll help. Same with the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. I'll show you that in a little bit. Same with the cellular. All that stuff can be turned on and off and it'll help a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and go into Wi-Fi. We're going to start out by, you'll see that I'm in um, airplane, or excuse me, I'm in Wi-Fi mode right now. My Wi-Fi is turned on and I'm connected to freaking hog. And you can see that all of these different... Um, available networks, they all have passwords in front of them, a little padlock. It's in the locked position. If it was unlocked, the padlock wouldn't be there, and all you would see is the Wi-Fi thing. However, in this particular case, you can see that you do get both. You get the padlock and you get the Wi-Fi. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to connect to a particular network. We're going to connect to Frickin' Hog Guest, and what I'm going to do is I'm only going to go through the process here I want you, what you're going to see here is you're going to type in your password, blah, 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 whatever it is, and then you're going to press join up there in the top right. I'm not going to do that right now because that would stop this recording. Of course, that's not something I want to do. And then in most people's case, you're just going to say join. I'm going to say cancel just to get out of that. And then what you're going to see is you're going to see this information here is what's available down underneath. Pretty much all that's going to happen is you're just going to connect to the network and you're just going to be up running on Wi-Fi. No big deal. Sometimes if you're inside like an AT, uh, excuse me, an AT&T store or a Starbucks or a McDonald's or some sort of coffee shop, you, you're going to run into a situation where they, a little flash screen will come up and that's asking you for you to agree to their terms and conditions. Basically, you're not going to download anything illegal. You're not going to try to do anything to anybody else's computers and all that good stuff. So what I would recommend is that you not do that. I would recommend that you use cellular. If you can use cellular or use a secure Wi-Fi, I definitely recommend that you do that. And what is a secure Wi-Fi? A Wi-Fi that, you know, it's your mom's house, it's your house, it's your friend's house. It's someone that you trust that's not going to be trying to hacking in or sniffing your stuff, not going to be doing anything that's inappropriate with your particular data. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over this a little bit here. Now, this is, I'm actually connected to my Wi-Fi right now. I'm actually looking at my information. As you can see, the very top, it says, forget this network. If you've connected at one time to a Wi-Fi hotspot that you no longer want to be remembered in your uh, stuff, just press forget. So if you're at McDonald's one day and you're connected to the AT&T network and you want to it to no longer remember you, just press forget. And that's an example like if you come over to my house and you type in my password and you, you, I change the password and it doesn't work anymore, you just press forget and then the next time you go to get into that network, it will ask you for the password all over. So it's a really good way for you to basically get a clean slate with that particular network. Okay, so we're going to move on down a little bit. You can see the IP address, the subnet, all that stuff. Most of that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Don't really worry about it. If, if, for example, you seem like you're having problems with the network, you can renew your lease. You're not going to notice anything really big about this particular situation, but you can do it. You know, it, it, it will work. And in here, you can manage this network. This will take you out and in, into a particular uh, app that you have to have installed. It's an airport utility. You have to have it installed to allow you to see these different, you know, items that are on the network. And as you can see in my particular case, I have a, uh, an Airport Express and I have a 
and um, I had several Airport Expresses, and then I also have a, um, a time machine. I'm going to go ahead and get back to where I was. And the last thing I want to talk about in the Wi-Fi uh, tab here is ask to join networks. That's another important thing because if, you, if you're out and about and you don't mind your phone or your iPad looking for connections, that's where you would go ahead and uh, click on that. But you won't click on this if you don't want to be bothered by that. And I suggest you have it shut off. As you can see, I have it shut off by that. Because your, your iPad is going to automatically join networks that you know in the first place. So just let that do that. Don't bother with this particular setting. Because if you do, everywhere you go, you're driving down the road, everybody's Wi-Fi hotspot is going to ask you, do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? No. Okay. So we're going to move on to that. One more thing before I leave. I want you to remember, too, if you turn Wi-Fi on and off, it's the same plane, the same thing as, practically the same thing as turning airplane mode on and off. It will reset your Wi-Fi. So if you're having Wi-Fi issues, you might do that. You know, you might just hit the Wi-Fi. The, um, rather than hitting the airplane mode, you might just go ahead and hit the actual Wi-Fi mode. Now we're going to move on to Bluetooth. Again, we have a Bluetooth on and off. So, again, if you're having connection issues with your Bluetooth, turn it off. Turn it back on. See how that works. As soon as you get into the Bluetooth mode, you're automatically going to notice that right by the word, by the word devices, it is, it is actually searching for a device. And that, what that means is if you take a Bluetooth speaker or a Bluetooth headset and you put it into pairing mode, it will automatically detect that device. Automatically. You don't have to do anything. It's just that's it's it's, it's automatically into, in discovery mode. So. If you look, I have a jam box and a jawbone and a Nike fuel band. And those particular items are already synced to my particular Bluetooth. Okay. And what you can do is you can turn them off and you can turn them off. I'm going to go ahead and you see they're now all connected. As soon as you turn the device on, it automatically pair with my particular iPad. I'm going to go ahead and press this little right button right beside the jawbone. And what you can do is you can forget it. Okay. You no longer own that keyboard, you no longer own that speaker, you no longer own that Bluetooth device, so you can say, let's get rid of that, never want to see that again. This is where you do that. And even if you're having problems with it, if you want to repair, this is how you do that. You just click on that forget. Okay, we're going to move on down to Sailor. Okay, now what we have here is um, Sailor on and off. Again, that's like turning Bluetooth on and off, that's like turning Wi-Fi on and off, or hitting the airplane mode. It's basically just resets the cellular connection. This is something I recommend that you do if you do not want cellular turned on. If, say, you have a 3G or a cellular device, but you no longer want to pay for it, just turn it off. It'll save you battery power. I also recommend that you turn it off if you don't really plan on using it. Say you do pay for the service, but you just don't want it on all the time to save battery and or the possibility of preventing any unnecessary data usage, turn it off. And, of course, the next option is enable LTE. Why you'd want to turn that off, I don't know. I love the speed of it. So enjoy the speed if you have it, and if you don't, you can turn it off. Like in my particular case, I don't have the option of LTE. I live in an area that's a pretty good-sized city, second largest in the state, but it's not, thank, thank you, AT&T, it's not, you know, LTE. Anyhow, then the next option is data roaming. I don't think you should ever have that turned on, ever. If you do turn it on, be prepared to pay a large amount of money. It will get expensive. So make sure you understand the rules of what you're doing when you have that turned on and off. And next thing you know, you can read your, um, go into your account. What we're going to do is here, I want to show you what it looks like, but I am not going to go ahead and enter it because I just don't want you to have that information. What you're going to do is you're just going to uh, go ahead and type in your username and password. And then you're going to go ahead and press next. What you're going to get is uh, just some bare bones information about your particular account. It's going to allow you to see your data plan, see when your data plan is over, see how much you've used, see how many days you have left, and see when your billing period is. And then, of course, you can add data. These are your options. And, of course, if you have Verizon or Sprint, those options will be different. And you can also add an international plan. Pay attention to the international plan. Those can be expensive. And then you can also click on to the user information. I'm not going to do that. That's the part I'm not going to do. I just don't want to get into that right here. And if you want to have a um, view the full account and overview, you can. It'll actually take you out to the website. All right. So 
all that being said. If you notice one of the last options on there, it was allow you to set up a view hot, um, a hotspot. I think a hotspot's a really good idea. The battery is really big in this uh, iPad, so you could you know can share the battery a long time. I think it's you know you could share the internet access, and that battery would just last and last and last. So this is what you do here: you just click on uh, set up a, a personal hotspot, and here you, these options are: you can set up your iCloud. Um, Excuse me, you can set up your cellular data usage for these particular items like iCloud, Documents, iTunes, FaceTime, Reading List. It just basically allows you to turn them on and off. That's all it's asking. Okay. They're pretty much, uh, iTunes can be a huge, huge data uh, suck. So you might want to have that turned off. And that's why I do. And lastly, if you want to have a little uh, protection on your SIM, you can go ahead and enter in your password right there. And that works out quite well. Well, anyhow, that's all I have for right now. I hope this helps you. You have a good day.